Welcome back to my complete TART course for beginners and beyond. This video contains the third chapter of my course and I've decided to share this for free here on YouTube. And if you're serious about learning DART, you should consider buying my full course on Udemy. This will include over 8 hours of content and comes with premium support as well as a complete reference ebook about DART. And you can buy the full course for a discounted price by typing this URL in your browser. Okay, so let's get started. In this section, we are going to learn about the Dart type system. As part of this, we will learn what it means for a language to be statically or dynamically typed. And we will talk about type inference, which is a feature of the Dart language that helps you declare variables without having to specify their type explicitly. We will learn about the var, final, const and dynamic keywords, what they mean, what their differences are and when you should use each of them. So by the end of this section, you'll have a better understanding about the Dart type system and how to use it to your advantage. By the way, one big aspect of the Dart type system is nullability, which is about declaring and using variables that may or may not have a value. But we will cover nullability later on in this course, and for now we will focus on the type system. Okay, so let's get started. When we talk about programming languages, there is one important distinction that is often mentioned, and that is the difference between statically and dynamically typed languages. For example, languages like Swift, Kotlin and Dart are statically typed, while languages like JavaScript and Python are dynamically typed. So what does it mean for a language to be statically or dynamically typed? We can say that a language is static when types are checked at compile time. On the other hand, a language is dynamic if types are checked on the fly during execution. And just as a reminder, in order for our code to be executed, it needs to first be compiled for the target platform, and after it has been compiled, then it can run and produce our output, for example, by writing to the console. So programming languages that are statically typed have a type checker, whose job is to guarantee that all the types are correct, and if they are not, then compilation fails. On the other hand, dynamically typed languages can only rely on runtime checks, and this means that any type-related errors can only be caught when the program is already running. So what does this mean in practice? Well, if we get back to the Dart pad editor, we can consider this simple example where we declare a string variable and then print it all in uppercase. And if we want, we can try to change the type of this variable to int. And as soon as we do this, we can see two errors telling us that a value of type string can't be assigned to a variable of type int and the method to uppercase isn't defined for the type int. And Dartpad produces these errors before we even run the program, so this all happens because Dart is a statically typed language. This makes it impossible to declare a variable of a certain type and initialize it with an expression of a different type. Likewise, it is also impossible to call a method that only works on objects of type string on a variable of type int. So let me restore this type to string. And once you have declared a variable to be of a certain type, you can't reassign it with a value of a different type, like this. And this code will result in this error. In summary, Dart enforces some strong guarantees about the types of the variables that we use, and it does this at compile time, meaning that if the types don't match, we can't even run our program in the first place. And because Dart enforces all these compile time guarantees, it is said to have a sound type system. On the other hand, there are dynamically typed languages like JavaScript, where there are no compile time guarantees like this. And when we create variables with those languages, we can assign them multiple times with values of different types. And in recent years, there has been a growing trend towards creating languages that are statically typed, because this leads to some important advantages. First of all, we can discover type-related bugs at compile time, and this can save you hours of development time because it can be very tricky to find bugs at runtime, especially as your programs get bigger. Also, statically typed languages result in code that is more readable because you can rely on variables actually having the type that they were declared with. And the resulting code is more maintainable as well, because when you change something, the type system can warn you about other code that breaks as a result. 
And the generated code is also much more efficient because the compiler has more knowledge about types and can optimize things. Okay, so we should now have some understanding of what a statically typed language is. And we are going to continue on the next lesson where we will learn about type inference. In this lesson, we are going to learn about type inference. And to do that, we are going to remove these two lines. And here we can replace them with these two variables of type int and double. And what we said before is that Dart is a statically typed language. And one advantage of this is that Dart can infer the types of the variables that we declare. This means that we don't need to declare variable types explicitly like we have done here. And instead, we can use the var keyword instead. So we can use var here, here, and here, like this. And when we do this, Dart will infer that this variable has type string, because it's initialized with a string literal. And along the same lines, Dart knows that this variable is an int, and this variable is a double. And this means that if we want, we can assign this variable with a different value, as long as it's an integer. But we can't assign it with values of any other type, like this boolean. And that's because the type of this variable is inferred to be int from the initializer, and it cannot change after that. Okay, so let's remove this statement and continue on the next lesson. In the last lesson, we had learned that we can declare a variable with var, and Dart will infer its type for us. And we said that when we do this, we can assign a new value as long as it has the same type. However, there are times where we want to declare and initialize a variable and never change its value afterwards. In other words, sometimes we want our variables to be read only. And to do that, we can use the final keyword like this. So when we do this, we are saying, hey Dart, declare and initialize this final variable for me and do not let me change it again. As a result, when we try to write something like this, then Dart will tell us that the final variable age can only be set once. And why would we want to do something like this? After all, if we declare a variable with var, we can assign it again. So in this sense, it seems that final is more restrictive. Well, this is actually a good thing, because if we limit the number of possible states that our program can be in, then we are less likely to introduce bugs or defects. For example, let's consider this simple program that takes a string and converts it to uppercase. And if we declare this titled variable with var, nothing stops us from assigning it with a new value, like this. But if the purpose of this program is to just take this and convert it to uppercase, we should not allow this variable to change. And for this reason, it's better to declare it as final. And Dart now tells us that we can't do this. Equally, once we have computed the output variable, then this shouldn't change either. So we should declare it as final as well. Of course, this is just a simple program, and maybe you are not convinced that this is a big deal, but as you work with larger programs with a lot of code, then using final can be really helpful, and it also shows you which variables are meant to be read-only. So the takeaway of this lesson is that final means read-only, and you should prefer final to var whenever possible. By the way, when you use final, you are still allowed to explicitly declare the type of your variables, and this means that you can write string here. However, this is not necessary because Dart will infer the type of this variable for you. So you don't need to do this, but I just wanted to mention that this is valid syntax. Okay, so let's continue on the next lesson. In the last lesson, we have learned that we can define read-only variables with the final keyword and that we should prefer final to var whenever possible. But in Dart, there is one more keyword that is even more restrictive than final, and that keyword is called const. So if we consider the program that we have just written, here we could declare this variable as const, like this. And by doing this, we are defining a compile time constant. Const variables are very good for performance, and if we use them, Dart can optimize the generated code and produce more efficient programs. So in this case, we can declare this variable as const because it is initialized with a string literal. And all literals are compile time constants themselves. On the other hand, if we try to declare this variable as const, 
then we get an error telling that const variables must be initialized with a constant value. And that's because Dart can only evaluate the value of this expression at runtime, so we can't assign it to a const variable. On the other hand, there are certain operations that Dart can resolve at compile time. For example, here we could define two constant variables like this, and if we wanted, we could define const z equals x plus y, like this. And this is valid syntax, because Dart is smart enough to evaluate x plus y as a compile time constant, so z can be const as well. And by the way, since these variables are all constant, they can only be set once, just like final variables. And this means that we can't write code like this. And Dart will tell us that this is invalid. Okay, so we have now talked about var, final and const. And as a reminder, here is how they work. We can use var for variables that can be set more than once. We can use final for variables that can only be set once. In other words, they are read-only variables. And we can use const for variables that are compiled time constants. And in terms of best practices, you should always prefer const over final, and you should always prefer final over var. Now, I'm aware that these concepts can be a bit confusing if it's the first time you hear them. So let's continue on the next lesson where we are going to do an exercise. Now that we learned about var, final and const, I'd like you to take a look at this exercise. So given the following program, which declares all these variables as strings, can you guess which variables can be declared as const, final and var while still resulting in a valid program. And as a reminder, you should prefer using const over final over var. So you can pause the video now and try to solve this. Okay, so let's try to figure out which variables should be const, final and var. As we can see, the first two variables are initialized with string literals, which are compile time constants. So for this reason, we can declare them both as const. Next, we have this favorite variable, which is created here. Now, this expression combines these two variables with string interpolation, but Dart is smart enough to still resolve this into a compile time constant. So if we wanted, we could try to declare this as const as well. But when we do this, we get an error saying that constant variables can't be assigned a value. And that's because we are assigning a new value to this variable on this line. So if we want this program to be valid, we have two options. The first one is to declare this variable as var, and this will make the error go away. But as we said before, it's better to prefer const when possible. So another option would be to create a new variable to hold this value. So here we could type const, and here we want to choose a different name for this variable. For example, we could call it new favorite, like this. And because this variable is now set only once, then it's okay to declare it as const. By the way, Dart is kind enough to tell us that this new variable that we have created is not used. And this is not something that was obvious before we converted this into a new variable. So while this is not an error, it's nice to know about it. Finally, here we have this new text variable, which is initialized with an expression that replaces pizza with pasta. Now, this expression is not a compile time constant, so we can't declare this variable as const. But since it's only set once, we can declare it as final, like this. So I hope that this exercise made it a bit clearer when we can use var, final and const. In any case, we'll be using these keywords extensively as we make progress with the course. So don't worry if something is not clear and we'll get back to these concepts again. In the previous lessons, we have seen that Dart can infer the types of our variables if we declare them as var, final and const. However, there is one more keyword that we should be aware of. This keyword is called dynamic, and dynamic is a way to opt out of the type safety features of the Dart language. So how does dynamic work? Well, let's consider this example. Over here, I can type var x equals 10, and then I can add x equals true. Now, as we know, this is invalid syntax, because Dart has inferred this variable to be of type int, and so we can't assign it with a value of type bool. However, here we could declare dynamic y equals 10, and this time, if we type y equals true, then we don't get an error on this line, 
And that's because once we declare a variable as dynamic, it can take values of any type. In other words, when we declare a variable as dynamic, what we are saying is, hey Dart, I know what I'm doing and I really want this variable to take values of any type. And in general, this is not a good idea because type safety helps us to write programs that are safer. But there are situations where we can't avoid using dynamic. One example of this is when we work with data in JSON format, which looks like this, and the values inside our JSON data can be of different types. So when we read this data into a Dart program, we may need to use dynamic. Now, I can't give you a full explanation about working with JSON at this stage because we first need to talk about collections in Dart. But all I wanted to say is that there are specific cases where dynamic is useful. And unless you are in one of these specific cases, you should stick to type safety with var, final, and const. By the way, we have reached the end of this section about the Dart type system. And I should mention that there is a very important part of the type system that we haven't covered just yet. And that is null safety and how we can declare variables that may or may not have a value. But in order to talk about null safety with enough detail, we first need to cover a bit more material. So let's continue on the next section and we'll get back to null safety later on in the course. This is the end of the third chapter. As a reminder, you can buy the full course on Udemy and get access to all the premium content that will not be included here on YouTube. So type this URL in your browser to buy my full course for a discounted price. Thank you very much for watching and if you found this useful, please like and subscribe and I'll see you on the next video.